Can you share that uh, link in the uh, the chat? So those. Mm -hmm. So we haven't added it to the invite yet, or the calendar uh, item. Oh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, <clears throat> my sound was not loud enough. Yeah, the uh, the link to this uh, this sheet um, for notes. Can you share that? Because it's still not in the. Oh, uh, sure calendar invite. Excellent. Let me put that in the chat. There we are. Those are the classic <clears throat> the sig notes. This is what I'm presenting, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Good morning, Vicky. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm still a bit pre-verbal today. Hey folks who are here already, uh, let's give it maybe two minutes. See if we get some more morning people to show up. Looks like it's going to be a, a short or a quick meeting with only a few of us. So I guess that's positive. <laughs> that's good for momentum. Yeah. Unless unless you folks are opposed to it, uh, we're just going to get started. Yeah, summer. So I'm reposting the notes here, <clears throat> just to. I don't know if I don't think Zoom actually shows history when people join. So. Um, these are the notes. Feel free to highlight your name in the table to make sure that we record, we record your presence. Um, today's agenda is actually, well, standard. Is there any new folks that haven't been here before? I see Hi, Dina. yeah, this is Dina from Intel. It's good to see you, Francis. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Dina. Yeah. Excellent, welcome, Dina.
the rest is uh, old timers at this point. All right, can we get a scribe for today's session? I'll try and keep up. Thank you, Eric. Let us know if, uh, if you need us to repeat or pause. Now, uh, I don't think we had any open discussion points from last time at all. So we can actually pick up where we were in a way. Now, SIG Business News, um, we do have a mailing list now. It has so many S's. I think it's open SSF dash SIG dash, uh, what was it again? OSS cert at lists dot open SSF. I think that's it. We've been using it for a handful of emails. If you are not on the list, uh, do email me privately as well as Crobe, and we will see if we can add you folks on it. But otherwise, yeah, we'll come to the, uh, the amazing long name lists. Now, picking up first item of the agenda here is like picking up review from DC. Um, so essentially on day two, we had a few notes. I was not there, but we have about 10, 15 points of discussion here uh, to get through. After that, once we're done with reviewing this here, um, we wanted to spend a minute to maybe have a look at the proposed changes that we had for uh, the plan. So essentially, when we reviewed the plan for the first few sessions of this, uh, this meeting, we had some changes and so on and so forth. So we've gathered them into a doc here. Feel free to have a look before we get to it. Uh, but some folks have less comments in it, so we'll be uh, having a quick look at it. And if, if we do have time, I wanted us to start talking about a mission and scope for the SIG, just to make sure that we clarify what it is that we're here to do and where we want to take this. Uh, it looks like there was some structural changes proposed to the plan that may affect said mission. So it might be good to actually review that and uh, see, if we, see if we can settle for something that pleases most folks in the room. So, picking up right away then. Now, public embargoes versus pre-release fix. So just before we get started, was anyone at the DC meeting? I was not. I was. Excellent. Emily, would you be able to comment on these and many of, like just to make sure to add context and some clarifications in some cases, I can read the words, but I can yeah. only speculate. <laughs> so the particular discussion around public embargo versus pre-release fix was that this is a continued hotly contested topic area within industry about what is most appropriate in particular with regard to open source projects. Um, there was concern that was expressed that the public embargo process favored large corporations that were capable of staffing individuals as part of a security release team and therefore um, giving unfair advantage <laughs> in industry to the rest of the partners. Um, it, it's one of those things that in the course of the discussion, the group felt that oh, OpenSSF needed to make a decision about what was going to be appropriate to move forward. And then once that decision was made, we needed to stick with it because ultimately whatever we decide is probably going to be setting like the acceptable standard for most other foundations and communities. Okay. Does anyone have like a major opinion about this before we uh, force some ideas? So essentially like the concern is for smaller companies that may not be able to actually like uh, yeah. provide staffing to do like longer term embargoes and so on and Correct. do actual like, you know, coordinated release fixes and yeah. so on <clears throat> okay were there any examples that were cited as like there were not i think there were only about six of us in the room so we were going with what we had available to us at the time mm -hmm. perfect okay should we just pick one and uh and hope for the best or was there like major 
advantages to one or the other from like your point of views? I think the intent was to be the most um, inclusive. Yeah, the most inclusive of the of the vast majority of the communities that would be that we would be dealing with and interacting with. And here, a pre-release fix basically means that we would just like, or the, the product maker would send out a pre-release fix to the impacted products or the rollout products. Correct. The uh, part of the, that. yeah, part of the other balance with that is when you have known adopters of a particular project, it makes it really easy. But if you're not keeping track of who your adopters are, it like as soon as you make that information publicly available, you've already got to run. Yeah. Okay. For most open source software, they're small and medium in size. I don't think they have that kind of knowledge at this point. So like coordinating a pre-release fix is almost probably as complicated as like doing a market research and understand like you need a dedicated team to understand your usage base at this point. Yeah. And that might be something that the education SIG takes on mm -hmm. with um, consultation from this group. I don't have a strong opinion about this, honestly. Like I've been, I think, involved on both sides where, you know, my company and my teams were just involved towards the last few minutes of like the releases and no one not in the embargo process and sometimes in the embargo itself. Yeah, last minute fixes are sometimes hard to actually push, especially for bigger corporations. So yeah, Vicky. Um, I think that one of the things this SIG should and can do is to try to um, educate and potentially coordinate these with these small and medium projects. Um, since there really are a lot, lot more of them than there are very large projects that have the resources to do this. Um, and so whichever way we decide, we should probably be assisting them to make sure that they can actually do it. I agree here that it might actually be good to coordinate with the education SIG to see if there's something we can do with respect to the office hours as well to like prepare smaller and medium sized projects for like dealing with embargoes in general. <clears throat> but this comes well, down to as well, I think. Uh, go ahead, sorry. And there is there some sort of uh, infrastructure or clearinghouse of some variety that we can help to set up and maintain that they can use uh, because the easier we make it for them, the more likely it is that it's actually going to happen. Um, Cause they may not have the resources to do that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's kind of related to the, uh, should we staff or should we run our own instance of Vince as a coordination tool and offer it to the smaller groups or the smaller projects as like uh, a place where they can actually coordinate. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the question of our relationship with Vince is a, a different matter, but certainly I would, if we can get away with it, I would rather we can fork or otherwise uh, spin off Vince. We, a single source of truth is going to be much better for this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually related to the later conversation about what it is that we want the SIG to position itself as with respect to its scope and mission. So, mm -hmm. maybe we need to think a little further about this as a group. Uh, I don't, I'm comfortable leaving it open for now if folks are as well. Yep, sounds good. All right. We don't have a strong opinion just yet. Maybe it will form itself in the next few uh, days or weeks. Next point is when the world's on fire, no one reads the documentation. So I think that one's pretty clear. Um, I mean, in general, I've always been, there was a, there was a playbook, I think, around the UK uh, NHS emergency 
uh, situation which had on the first page if you're reading just for the first time during an emergency just don't read it and do what you can uh, i'm a big fan of that so i agree here like what was the um, emily do you recall the point of discussion here or the yeah so the concern was a lot of these processes just like we discussed are pretty complicated especially if you've never done them before so providing any kind of guidance to a project without the subsequent level of training or attention um, can be extremely overwhelming particularly in a, in a situation where you do need to respond quickly so whatever is produced like there should be material that's available with a more personal level of engagement with the project and the maintainers about how to deal with a particular situation before it occurs um, as well as like a cheat sheet or something else that just has short and sweet here here are the main things that you need to do if you don't remember anything else yeah a credit card sized playbook of sorts yeah i think that's a good idea whatever we generate could could potentially have two versions like i, I think it's fine but uh, any big position in the room or opinions about this? Yeah, I know, that the, I know that the Go best ahead. practices group is working on a one pager for a lot of kind of common, uh, it's more of a cheat sheet really than a one pager for a lot of common items around best practices for implementing security, something similar um would potentially be good for firefighting um more specifically the other one is more learning in, in general about uh, security processes but something like this would be ideal might be something to talk uh, to uh, the best practices group and collaborate with them in more detail on i think that makes sense all right excellent next point Registry of a project for the central platform to Mary reporting to the maintainers. So was that also basically a tool like Vince or? This one, I, I'm trying to recall specifically what it was about. I think the difficulty came in and discovering maintainers of certain projects mm. is difficult. Um, particularly if you're providing security incident response support to them um, while there's the code owners and the maintainers file that may not always be up to date in some cases. So having additional ways to contact maintainers is important beyond just like their GitHub handle. Agreed here. This might actually be an interesting discussion that we may even have with GitHub and GitLabs to see if there's somewhat of a like proposed best practice or proposed here's a starter project template that offers also a security.md file or something to report into. Um, Vicky, you had an opinion? Um, yeah, uh, not so thrilled about the idea of the registry. Um, to me, that implies just a collection of names from all over the place, right? Uh, and it just screams uh, privacy and GDPR problems. Um, but uh, working with GitHub, GitLab, because <clears throat> the entire world does not revolve around GitHub, believe it or not. So we can't just focus on just GitHub. Um, so GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, all the various things, um, work with them to help not enforce, but make it easier to do the right thing with your security.md or .txt or what have you, and to keep it up to date. I mean, we all get those uh, pop-ups when we log in saying, hey, is this still your email address? <clears throat> is it possible to get them to do something like that for, hey, is your security or maintainers that, uh, .txt still up to date? Um, and working with them to do that sort of thing would be very helpful. I see to Mark. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been studying GitHub most recently and, and uh, mo more as just to see if it has really good patterns that, um, that teach, um, teach people who's just started to, uh, uh, to build projects and, and, and have 
have adopters or forkers or whatever. And, and I, thought, I thought this discussion just started to go along the edge of kind of governance and best practice. And, and I, I, um, I did a study about security.txt or security.md and I found them woefully missing and terribly exciting. And, and that's where I've been play, um, placing a lot of my emphasis, um, just looking at what are the few low hanging fruit things that are just so worthwhile that, that GitHub has put in place and then you know, doesn't have any, have any tools to measure governance or go, oh my gosh, this project is um, missing uh, security.md or you know, whatever. You know, so this, this little piece of the discussion just uh, really encouraged me. And, and I, I felt so out of my depth when all of a sudden we were talking about little tiny projects with, um, uh, you know, that didn't have a full security team. I realized, oh my gosh, you know, what's the, what's mm -hmm. the minimum that they could do? That's, that's where I've been focusing on is what are just small changes that are inexpensive in terms of time that could have great outcomes. So I, I was really encouraged by this. I, you know, I, 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 um, I think there, there's a lot of value in this discussion. That's, that's my two cents. Mark, I don't know if, um, if you'd be willing to or ready to share some of the uh, results of your analysis, even if it's just informal, it might be interesting to just have a look as well. And oh, yeah. if you want to send yeah. it out to the mailing list. Yeah, sure. I'll, um, uh, I, I actually um, started to tool up something because I thought you know, measuring governance uh, artifacts was so cool. And mm -hmm. what I found is they're woefully missing. And, and the, the, the code I was looking at was our company's code. And I thought, oh, wow, is this a good security research, research project? So if, if I can boil it down to um, a paragraph, because I'm so chatty, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that this week. Yeah, glad to. Mm -hmm. sure. I see. I see two points being like raised so far. One of them is that we should probably work with GitHub, GitLab, and the other major like code source or code hosts services. And the other one is like an easy entry point, making it easy or providing some kind of like a tool if possible. Um, I know the OpenSSF is working on something called All Star, which seems to be working as an app on GitHub and already includes security.md as one of the checks. Uh, I'll be curious to hear actually from GitHub folks like Madison here, if, uh, if this is something your team or your group has already thought about doing or looking into, it might, you might have a lot more information on, uh, on that kind of like work already. Putting you on the spot here, Madison, sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, we, uh, we've talked about this a bit. I guess maybe the one thing I can share that might be somewhat uh, related to this idea. We are uh, internally over the next quarter working on a feature that will end up being giving researchers the ability to privately disclose to maintainers on GitHub. So this feature is, uh, as you can imagine, quite large and it's probably a little ways out before it'll be done <laughs> in any way. Uh, but our uh, CISO publicly stated last year that we were interested in moving on this. So the work for that internally is starting over like the next quarter or so, um, which will be very helpful for uh, this effort. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, Matt, but as you can imagine, it's a little ways away. <laughs> thank you, and no, that's good to hear timelines as well here. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you had your, your hands raised. Yeah, I was trying to follow where this conversation was going, but I was trying to go back to the original bullet. To me, it just seems like you need to wait a place, you need a tool or some place where people can communicate. <laughs> That's all, right? I mean, we. I mean, I think we, the last call we talked about how do you bring people together from disparate areas so they all communicate around an issue, an ephemeral communication system, basically. Isn't that what th the first bullet implies? Uh, yes you know, and no. Telling um, people um, how to get there is one thing or how to whatever, but typically, you know, it's about who do you invite? The question is, you know, do we have an email list? Do we have a chat room? You know, how do we how do we marry the, the people reporting to the maintainer? So how do they communicate, right? Isn't that telling you how, to there, how, to, how to join? And you know, then who gets access control to that? Who, who gets permission to, to join? 
Isn't that the fundamental thing we're talking about? So you're right. I think it's a communication issue uh, that we're discussing. The registry idea is, I think, very specifically to how do you get researchers to know where to even contact maintainers or uh, with, for example, like uh, Mark's study here on like the security.md or the intakes on GitHub, it's actually very sparse. There are very few projects that actually have clear intake on how to report vulnerabilities into the project in the maintainers. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So I think that's, yeah, I'm saying that you're that right, is, though, it's a communication from issue. What, from, what, from what we're providing, you know, we can provide a, you know, a simple template, absolutely, how to how you get there. But I think it's, to me, it's like, what do we need to do as a group here? You know, we, we need to create some some tools or facilities for communication, right? Correct. That's what we're discussing. I agree. Yeah. Mark, you had your hand raised as Emily after that. Or Mark's hand is stuck. Emily, go ahead and we'll uh, get back to Mark. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I was... I was chatting in the background in Teams and, and listening at the same time. I just wanted to remark on that whole thing about the sparseness of, uh, um, of the security.md. Uh, um, I thought that was just interesting. And, and where I was going with this was not so much that it was woefully missing, it, rather that, um, that GitHub had, had and, and other projects that want to follow GitHub's patterns um, had, had done some really nice um, minimum project setup and also some community um, guidance best practices. And, and that's along the lines of what we're uh, trying to do. And um, years ago, when I, I, I said, oh, I want to take this Python project and, and put it someplace, then I had to go find out what's a, what, are, what are the community norms? And that, that's really what I wanted to focus on with this study, not so much um, uh, it's, it's good or bad to have those missing, but I, I was, I'm really looking at the things that um, enable you to report. And one of the things that I'm, I'm still studying is both um, issues and pull requests that actually are uh, security notifications. And, and that's, that's where I started with this. And then I actually went to a, a more broad um, kind of study. Well, what else enables this? And, um, and, and, and I found a couple, you know, where it's like, oh, wow, nobody ever responded to that. And, and that was really far more interesting to me, just like you were talking about disclosures and private disclosure channel. Fantastic. What, what I've been doing is implementing a full text search on uh, issues, and I and I found myself going. I have a list of things I wish GitHub would do that would help um, maintainers go. Oh my gosh, look at all these issues. Are, are any of them uh, security issues? And how would you do that? So that that was my the nature of my uh, itch that I was scratching. Okay. Thanks thanks for letting me share with that. Thank you, Mark, uh, Emily. So within the CNCF, um, we maintain a maintainers list of all the maintainers of the projects within the foundation. Um, sometimes that works for contacting them, but for the most part, we don't receive very many responses to the individuals that are on that mailing list. Um, so if there is consideration for adding projects that the OpenSSF chooses to engage in, adding those maintainers to a mailing list to be able to contact them, and there is a potential concern that they won't respond. The other um, situation that we've come up against in the past is when there is a significant vulnerability or security incident with a commonly used open source project, such as the case with CodeCov, we did not have a good record or mechanism by which we can engage with maintainers of projects that were using that particular service to give them a discrete notification that their credentials potentially could have been compromised. So if we're talking about a form of communication and contacting maintainers of projects, both for security researchers, but also as the cert, if we become aware of an incident that has a larger impact to the community to make them aware, um, there are multiple potential communication styles and chat mechanisms for reaching out to them that should be considered. I agree here. 
Uh, Matt, your hand. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> in a similar vein, I may have mentioned on a previous call, uh, I'm a maintainer on an Apache project. So Apache maintains a list of all maintainers. Um, they have a global email for any security for all, for all of Apache Foundation. So my experience is, is that things are reported in one of three ways. They, people actually pay attention and report it to the global email for Apache Foundation. They report, they actually, there's a private list for the maintainers. They send an email to those maintainers or they reach out to who they perceive as a maintainer on the project and email, mail, email them directly. So it's always, it always starts with an email, it seems. Um, anyway, and people discard what's ever in security.md. They just email and say, here's, here's what I found. So. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been receiving a lot of the emails as well, and I'm not, in, I'm not directly on some of the, those projects as well. So uh, Matt, sorry, Mark, your hand was raised. Uh, was it raised again? Okay. So I, I think you've been writing Mark for my comments as well, but anyways. <laughs> there you go, fixed it. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. All right, looks like we have quite a bit of opinions and ideas here. Um, is there a group here or subgroup of folks who care enough about this to think about it offline and get back to us maybe next week or in two weeks with an idea or a proposal on how we should approach this as the OpenSSF cert? Because Emily was right here that like uh, some of these topics and many of, well, most of these topics, whatever position we take as nor like as a function will probably be what the open SSF recommends going forward. Madison. No, I'm just raising my hand that I care. I'm happy to meet about this offline. Sounds good. I can help coordinate all of this. Emily hand raised as well. Uh, I'm interested in it, but I would also mention that this may not be something that needs to be immediately resolved if we don't have organizational procedures for maintainers to follow or for this group and notifying the maintainers of something going on. Eric, your hand is raised as of in, out of interest as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in this topic. I also think you know, there's some collaboration again that where this may be something that either the, the secure tools and or best practices group may want to weigh in on um, as well. So it's something that potentially we should branch out in, in those meetings and see if we can um, just make sure we're not reinventing the wheel if someone else is doing it um, and making sure that we uh, collaborate and uh, a little better too. We don't want to work in a vacuum. There are other groups uh, that, that do this. Perfect. I will email the lot of you and we'll, uh, we'll reach out to the best practices and education subgroup, if that's okay with everyone else here. Matt, yes. Well, it seems to me that one of the groups we have the most in common with is the Alpha Omega project because they're effectively setting up communications. They're basically coming in with a SWAT team and saying, hey, we're gonna help you secure your project and evaluate it. So they're setting up communication channels, they're setting up whatever tools are needed. They're setting up um, a prescriptive set of tool chains to run against to test for other security and vulnerabilities. They're hosting infrastructure to test and things like that. So it seems the synergy is there. I agree. Right, let's add the Alpha Omega group here just to for completeness. Excellent. Next point, global security database can serve as a starting platform if built correctly to drive reporting and augmenting suspend, suspected and confirmed vulnerability. Is that, uh, Emily, do you have context on that one as well? Yep, um, so I'm part of the global security database group. Um, it is an open source project that the Linux kernel and many other projects have been leveraging for providing suspected vulnerabilities as well as confirmed vulnerabilities. It aggregates 
uh, vulnerability information from multiple sources, including CVE and a few others. That's the intent is to be a global location where researchers, um, security operators, and other individuals in the field to go and learn about vulnerability information without having to go to Twitter all the time because Twitter has the most. So we're trying to shift that traffic to a more uh, formal location. Um, the concern particularly around here is there's a lot of potential with the global security database and the current format that it has and the data schema that it supports it does need additional assistance in confirming which fields we want to keep track of such as shortcuts to reporting an issue for a particular project project ownership and maintainership so that if a vulnerability is reported against a project the maintainer can actually have an active role in managing the information around Around the vulnerability instead of with MITRE having a middleman um, doing a lot of that handoff. So there's there's work to be done in that area and this was a topic that was just initially proposed to make the group aware of it as a point of consideration in our procedures moving forward. Okay and that database is it maintained and owned by the OpenSSF Foundation itself or is um, it a different? is actually under the Cloud Security Alliance because uh, vulnerabilities and CVEs in particular don't necessarily fall within the cloud realm. They don't get reported that way. So this was also to, designed to address that shortcoming in the existing CVE structure. Okay, the whole hosted services scope of CVEs, for example. Correct. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'd love to hear more about it indeed. I don't know if we should uh, indeed like take a stance with respect to that as like the cert, but I thank you very much for sharing the information. Anybody had questions about it? Emily, that might be an interesting uh, little like 10, 15, 20 minutes presentation for one of the sinks in the future if uh, if you'd be open to that maybe not this week next week or if not summer, me but, uh, someone yeah. else from the group and i'll put the links to the um, project in the notes perfect thank you so much next discussion point how do we update and generate tools to automate the creation and discovery of these issues so we have a lot of how to link and uh, maintainers to researchers as well as like looking into tools for doing that. So is that within that same context, Emily? Um, a little bit. I think part of it was the discoverability of potentially misreported vulnerability information as security issues. Um, but this is, I believe it was in response to another point of discussion that was not captured fully. Okay. In that case, next point, OpenSSF can become a phone book of a given project with documented ways of engagement for them, be the glue to track it down. So the registry seems to scream at me again. Um, all right, am I misinterpreting this or is this also related to the, the idea of a registry of sorts for escalations and connections of people. Yeah, it was about having a lot of difficulty in being able to identify and notify maintainers. Okay, perfect. Next point, sorry. A feedback into the tool chain about this. So assuming also phone book. All right. Now, next point, the CERT of last resort. Drive folks to the foundation-based CERT. Establish the hierarchy of incident reporting for projects, foundations, and the CERT of last resort. So. So would this be around like raising awareness and so, like uh, somehow? So this was, um, 
The original point of the discussion on day two around this was creating that firefighter volunteer, lots of air quotes, because the term volunteer was very uh, hotly contested. Um, mm -hmm. But the point of it was, is that there should be a security incident response team um, that can provide assistance to projects that are undergoing an incident. The problem with that is, is that there are hundreds of thousands of open source projects that don't have a security person on them or a security team or a security file. So you can imagine it can be very overwhelming when you have a widespread incident that affects build systems or tooling or something to that effect. So the proposed structure was twofold. Um, that every project that had the resources and the capacity and interest to do so would have their own security team or, or mailing list. Those that couldn't, but were part of a foundation, the foundation would establish a security incident response team that those non-security team projects can go to in the event of an incident. And then if a project isn't part of a foundation, um, there is a sort of last resort or if you have a foundation that's nested underneath of another one like cncf is underneath of lf lf can have a search a higher level order so the idea being at some level you have somebody that you can call so when you pick up the phone to call 911 you're calling your local emergency services that's how it's being redirected it's based off of where you're located this would be a similar function in the event that there is a widespread incident that your local emergency response team either doesn't exist or is incapable of handling, they would escalate to the next higher order. So that was the structure. That's one portion of it. The second portion is being able to communicate with the responsible foundations such as Apache, CNCF, um, and all the other ones that we would recommend they partake in this process to help establish that hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be interesting. Uh, Vicky. Yeah, Emily touched on the point I was going to make right there at the end, which is um, there are a lot of foundations out there um, and we need to make sure that we are coordinating with them, not dictating to them. Um, uh, there is a directory of open source related foundations that we can use maintained by the Floss Foundations community. Just drop the link into the chat. Um, and full disclosure, I'm one of the maintainers of it. Um, so uh, there are a lot of them and, and the vast majority of them are not under the Linux Foundation. So we'll need to pull them in. Um, if not, at least uh, communicate with them. Um, to let them know and invite them to the group to make sure that they can all be a part of this. I think that all makes sense. Building somewhat of a hierarchy of escalations to start and also like coordinating with the other foundations to make sure that they all know we can and we, we can expect them to escalate to us and vice versa. Like building somewhat of a strong network of folks and foundations like that. And I think that makes perfect sense for this. All right. Okay, so I don't think we disagree on anything here. Uh, this is something we want to include in whatever action plan we have for the cert. So, excellent. Matt, yes. Yeah, I'll also point out that a lot of organizations, quote unquote, that own soft, open source software actually are private companies and often the private companies are a, a person. So we will have legal uh, boundaries to, to, you know, foundations are easy to work with. That's the, that's the, that's the easiest case. Um, it's where we get into situations where there are private orgs of a few people and there's legal considerations. And then the worst case, you know, the, the stuff that we'd probably be concerned about is the people who don't have foundations. I think that's where we're most concerned in terms of, because we're, we're basically saying we're going to help you be the, the group of last resort, right? Yeah. That true. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to definitely think about this and how we want to shape that.
Excellent. So I think we all agree we need to look into that on this seriously and think about it. Next point, map out those cases and discuss these to allow mapping of this. So I assume that's with respect to the, uh, the three categories you named. Escalation procedures, correct. Excellent, thank you. On the topic of mutations of coding patterns for incident response. So would that be, for example, like when something is discovered or publicly made available, all of a the sudden there's focus on it by their security researchers and variations start happening? Or I believe so, but I'm not, I'm not confident in the dialogue around that particular point. Okay, okay, so we'll just... There we go. Let's dump it on people who aren't here. It's much easier. Next bullet point, uh, value of exercises in war games, the radical tabletops exercises can be useful. So I think uh, this was already previously discussed as something we wanted to engage with the education um, group about. Is that correct? Am I missing anything? No, um, I think it was also in part for security incident response teams to also execute on those because there are different um, types of maintainer interaction um, if we're providing incident response either because somebody contacted them or somebody contacted an incident response team to go talk to the maintainer. So kind of allowing for all the different um, potentially positive and negative interactions that could occur. Sounds good. Next bullet point. Ask maintainers how do they want to support to be supported when notified of a zero day. <laughs> How would you like to use zero day served, sir? Um, that's kind of like, that covers the topic of engagement and also connecting with uh, like what it is that people need. I think this is one of the first bullet point we have with our own search plan, like uh, discover and explore what it is that we want to offer as a service more specifically. So I think this, uh, this fits right in there. Any changes, variations, or ideas about this from anyone here? All right. Zero day training for devs, zero day training for security researchers approaching OSS. Um, yeah, I would definitely loop that into the exercises and war games ideas. Also like the zero day question that's just above, that seems to be a related comment. Cert of last resort, SIG under Von Disc Discovery, Disclosure. Uh, Eric, you've mentioned that this is a duplicate. Excellent. And lastly, document how OSSF will handle reports and escalations. So yes, this will definitely be something we want to uh, make very crystal clear, like even only, if only for the legal reasons that might be attached to the fact that there's you know, how many of us here? 12 and probably 10 different companies represented. So yes, this will need to be uh, ironclad up to some extent. Fully agree on that. So uh, Emily, sorry again, was there anything else discussed at the second day that uh, wasn't covered so far or you think we should surface? Not with regard to this particular stream. Perfect. Thank you, in that case, I propose we move forward with the proposed so, changes to the plan. One last yes. thing on, on the last point. I think that you talk about all these great foundations who have processes, you know, the OpenSSF. I just went to one of our flagship projects, Fresca, and they don't have security.md. You know, what's what's our op own SSF um, reporting process? What's our own, how do we handle our own reports and stuff like that? You know, should we take ourselves through those exercises or tabletop games or war games as well? So be practice what we preach type of thing. Eating your own dog food. Yeah, yeah. Various, uh, various names for this idea here at this point. Uh, but yes, fully agree on this one. We should, uh, we should if anything, be uh, promoting our own best practices.
for a fresca, uh, just <laughs> file a bug. Well, I, I, bet, I mean, I just, I just picked one off the top of my head, which is near and dear to my heart right now. But I bet if I went to every project and they don't have a security MD file, they, if you ask the maintainers there what, what the open SS process is, there, there are none. There, there are none. So there is no email, there's no plan, there's no zero day, there is no, not, there's nothing from what I'm aware of. Maybe we should recommend to install All Star. Excellent. All right. So, yeah, um, any other comments before we move on or questions or reflections on these uh, discussions that happened? Yes, Vicky. Just a quick one. Um, because of the way the notes were set up, our notes for today are currently on the July 19th date. If we could uh, cut and then paste those into the right location, that would be awesome. All right, I'll put that, leave that as an action item for notes cleaning. We only have about 10 minutes, so we won't really, we really won't have time to, um, sorry, Vicky, did you have another uh, question? Nope, just forgot to okay. put my hand down. Sorry, no worries. All right, so yeah, we have only a few minutes left and I don't think we'll be able to actually review every box items or every item in the revised or suggested revisions to the plan. Um, let me link it here. I've linked it in the notes as well, but here's for exhaustive completeness in the chat. This here is um, the original plan that we discussed over the first two meetings, where we basically reviewed all of the goals and sub goals and uh, kind of discussed and saw if we could apply some variations to them with respect to the form group that we have. I wanted to highlight maybe like some of the important points. Um, so how to read this document first off, if you see a full length, multi-row entry it means nothing's changed we agreed to it and there's some comments on the right here for changes in reasoning and the discussions that happened around it um, if you see issues like this um, let me open this up anyone with the link can edit so do feel free to correct typos it is definitely my fault you can blame me on that otherwise uh, don't this is fine like just uh, go ahead and correct these typos. Otherwise, this, uh, when you see two columns here, it basically means there was some changes. So uh, yellow and green, greens are additions. Yellow tend to be kind of delays or changes in scope as defined above. So feel free to have a look here. And something we probably, there you go. Okay, thank you, Marta. Um, we do have a review stage. So I wanted to highlight, like maybe we can actually spend five minutes to have a look at the big red boxes, just to at least uh, raise awareness that these topics were either not raised or uh, incomplete in discussion for us to actually take a stand about it. So there would be this one, 2.4. This was agreed to be removed, 0.8 and 0.9. So that's three points. Does that work? Are there any opposition to just reviewing the three uh, main unfinished points. And I would leave all of you to have a read of the document if you want to do and uh, put some comments in. We can do an asynchronous comment session and then review this a bit more uh, in like uh, over discussions at the next meeting, if everyone's okay with that. That sounds like a great plan. Awesome. So Marta's point here, we should remove this. Uh, we have a review stage below. So propose writing software patches to remediate identi identified vulnerabilities only when specifically requested by maintainers. Um, we do have a review process later on. So we could definitely just remove this and include it in that for a bigger scope or simpler scope. Any nays? Eric, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I guess the way I'm reading this is more about actually writing the patches, not doing reporting. So I guess I'm more like a review stage. So is, is this actually fixing the issue or is this doing the review component? 
And as does the review component further down cover the same thing about writing package patches or just doing the, the, the due diligence. Um, that's, I just want to make sure they're the same thing based on the comment it says review and this makes it sound like it's actually fixing the problem. So. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Eric. Mark. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, I was a little concerned about that as well. I think it's a little premature if we were getting involved in um, actually having a fixed team. Uh, I, I didn't quite understand that. Um, can you guys flesh that out a little bit more? I'm, I'm on a real small screen, so um, I was alarmed. Is that is that zoomed in a little bit a little better? Uh, uh, Madison. So I just want to make sure I'm on the same page. We're proposing that we remove 2.4, meaning that the cert team doing this wouldn't write software patches. Right? Is how I'm reading this correctly? Uh, it's twofold. So there is a review process that we have below that we will basically uh, try to clarify and rescope properly to maybe include reviews, triaging, uh, like patching and writing of patches. So we're essentially postponing the conversation for a later point. <laughs> okay, so like the conversation for what the incident responders would actually do is postponed till later. Okay, okay, great. Cause that was my next question is what would we expect the skill set of this group to be? Cause that sounds like quite a lot of things. <laughs> correct, correct. I'll, I'll um, save that conversation then. <laughs> Yeah, write, write down some of your uh, points here. Can do. Excellent. Feel free to comment or insert comments in the document as well, like just to um, actually keep these things uh, formally recorded so we don't skip over them. All right, uh, the other red block here, there's no need for discussion here, but essentially we decided to remove the very, the very specific list of criteria to give us a little bit more room that was globally agreed. Point number eight. So this is a recruitment of a cohort. Um, this definitely needs a lot more review. Uh, I don't know if we'll have time to actually discuss what timeline we want to do with the CERT, that we want to hire people, that we want our staff, like uh, staff a full CERT team and an incident response team, or just be a service that offers best practices and assistance uh, with some needs. So we'll need to actually sit down and all think about this more like very actively. Five minutes is definitely not going to help with that. Uh, I propose we look at number nine and spend more time on thinking about like the actual staffing that we want to do here. All right. Point number nine, document publicly an operational model for this service, for the service, including, so point number one was commitment, firefighters. This is again, the same topic more or less. So I guess we won't get away from it. Uh, I don't, I just feel like there's four minutes left and it would just hurt to start talking about it. Uh, so if everyone's okay, I would actually just keep that for the next meeting. All right, I see no positions, a few thumbs ups. And sounds good to me. All right, in that case, this covers the agenda for today. Um, your homework, if you so choose to spend time on it, is to have a read about this plan and the changes and leave comments. Um, you can have discussions in there as well. If you see typos, do inline in like fixes. Don't wait for me on it. It's all good. I am not super good in English, so we'll all get there one day. Otherwise, I'm happy to close out two minutes early. Excellent. Any last words, comments, jokes, funny faces? We're all good then. Take care. See you next week. We'll continue with the plan. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.
Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Eric, for taking notes.